Hello everyone, in this short video I'd like to show what is necessary to connect this small 28 BYJ48 stepper motors to the ramp spot in case you want to use them with a 3D printer design. Do you think this is quite unusual? It's yes, uh, in fact it's true. Uh, normally uh, they are used stepper motors with more torque and, and bigger, uh, also with a higher price. Uh, nevertheless, there are several uh, examples where 3D printer designs use uh, make use of these stepper motors. Just to name a few, uh, from Kickstarter projects there are, there's this Tyco uh, printer uh, which is still uh, going on. There's another project uh, recently about the 101 Hero called. Uh, a couple of months ago there was uh, a printer called N3D. Uh, there are also Instructables or Antigiverse uh, projects regarding uh, 3D printers that make use of this, this uh, stepper driver, like the Cherry 60 Euro printer or the Toy Red 3D printer. However, uh, it's possible to use them, uh, but uh, on the other side, they are unipolar and it's difficult to use them by default uh, and connect them with the RAM spot, there's something to do to get this done. We need a couple of tools for that. Most important here uh, a screwdriver, a flathead, uh, some kind of knife, uh, uh, this uh, here. Uh, it's also helpful to have a soldering station or soldering iron together with a vacuum pump. If you feel not comfortable with uh, desoldering, you can also use uh, this one just to, to cut it off. Uh, but let's start with opening this uh, plastic case. Uh, it's hold on this, this and this point. Just carefully going here inside. Uh, uh, right behind this plastic casing there is a PCB and therefore we need to be a little bit careful not to damage it. Okay, and here on that side there's the other point where it is holding down. Okay, this has two or three. One is left on the other side. Here we are. We don't uh, waste this, we can use it afterwards to close it again. So we just move it a little bit back. First thing you need to do is to get rid of this red wire. I go with the desoldering. If you like, you can also use this one to just cut it off. Pull it out, there are some of the shrink tubes along the wiring, also pull it out there, just the red wire, keep the others as they are. There's more to go. And we get rid of the whole connector, we replace it with 
another one. One more thing we need to do is we have to cut off a trace that is right here in the middle. Use this sharp knife, be careful not to hurt yourself or ensure yourself, of course, also not to destroy the other leads. They need to remain intact. Just do a couple of scratches here. Should be sufficient. Uh, multimeter is very helpful in that case. We have one here with a continuity check. Basically it means if, if these both get contact, we get an audio signal. So if we were successful, we should hear nothing. Otherwise, there should be a beep. Oh, it's silent. Check another trace. Okay. Nothing. Well, at that point we can put back the case, the plastic case. I always start here with the top side, followed by one of the other sides. done. Last thing we have to do is to get a new connector at the end of these wires and also have the right ordering for these wires. Let's set one, start one by one with the pink hole. Just put away some of the isolation. So, if we take a look, close look, uh, they have an, let's say, an upside and a downside. The downside or the bottom side is completely closed. The other side here has a couple of, uh, I'll call it clips or, or flaps. They're basically uh, rectangular sh uh, shaped in the middle and triangular uh, shaped uh, the most outer end. Lay in here the, the wire and put it far enough, so as far that the end of the isolation just is right in between the two types of flaps. Uh, the first pair is just to have some kind of uh, uh, strain relief. We pull them down here. Our tool. As I already said they work as a strain relief, and the second set of flaps is uh, to make the electronic contact. Also, we just bend them down one by one. this for all the other wires, put up the isolation, get the next female pin head connector insert.
two more to go. There are crimping tools uh, to ease that task, however I tried them a couple of times but at the end I came back to this method. Just feel more confident with this. Last one. Okay, now we need to insert them into this housing, pinhead connector housing. If you never used them before, they are quite easy to use. Uh, you just slide them in. Uh, for the orientation, there is a small arrow uh, printed on the housing that uh, gives the direction where you have to insert it. Uh, again, it uh, makes a difference which orientation the, the insert itself has. Uh, as already said, there's a bottom side which is uh, completely closed and flat. This, in this particular case, it must be down um, and just slide it in. Uh, the, when you apply it it's right, you must hear some clicking noise that gives you the indication that uh, it has uh, the right contact or it just fits in and get uh, behold by these uh, latches here. So let's start with the first one. Uh, the order is uh, the pink one first. Here we are. Exactly. It's arrest arrested here. I heard the click. The next one will be the orange one. The next one will be yellow. And finally, the blue one. That's it. And this is all you need to do to convert it from uh, unipolar to bipolar and to get them connected to the ramp board. Now it's just the same like the NEMA motors. You just uh, take a look on, on your ramps and uh, depending on which axis or extruder you want to connect it, you uh, put it in on the right position. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.